Let me guess, your Canva is feeling super duper messy. You're feeling overwhelmed by it. There's too much going on and you're not sure how to organize your Canva. As someone who's been using it for, I don't know how many years, I wanna let you know how I organize my Canva as a professional designer, as a business owner, and as someone who just likes the program. I wanna share with you the different strategies that I use to make sure that I never lose a file and that it's somewhere that I enjoy actually being and not feeling overwhelmed by it. So let's dive in. So hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Jackie and I'm a graphic designer who loves teaching business owners how they can utilize programs just like Canva to create their own incredible brand, their own incredible graphics to help to grow their businesses and to actually enjoy the process at the same time as well. And so it's great to have you here. If you're not already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you want to wait until you like the video at the end, you can you can wait until you press the like button or if you want to not forget, feel free to hit it now. But in essence, there's a few key things I think are really important when organizing your Canva. I actually shared this with my students in my co-creation design club the other week I had a student ask me how do you organize Canva and I just shared with her things that I thought were quite practical but they were actually things that all of the students were like oh wow I hadn't thought of doing it like that so what I'm sharing with you today isn't groundbreaking it's just how it actually works for me and my brain your brain may work differently this may not suit you but I hope that you can take a few bits and pieces from what I'm going to share and make it work for you if you take nothing else away from this tutorial I need it to be name your files every single time you open up a design in Canva I want you to name it 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 and if you're not sure how to name it, I'm going to show you to make sure that you always name it. So I'm just going to open up a brand new design here. Doesn't matter what I'm going to do. And if you're going to forget, do this the second that you open it up or just make sure you always do it. Automatically, it's going to be called like untitled design. We don't want to leave it like that. You're not going to be able to find anything like that. So always name it. What I recommend naming it is naming it as many things like this file name can be as long as you want. So let's say this is a lead magnet design. So I'm going to type in lead magnet or freebie, like whatever it is. And to be honest, sometimes I call things freebies and sometimes I call them lead magnets. So I'm actually going to write both of those words in here because that means that when I search for this file, I'm going to be able to find it no matter what I name it. So I'm going to do lead magnet freebie, um, five ways to design in Canva. Like hopefully I've got a better name for my freebie than this, but that's just an idea. And so I've got all of the things that this needs to be. I've got it named in that file name. And if you're working on a different project or for a different business, then name it that as well. So I could just call in here my business's name. I could add in white deer. That way that when I search any of those terms in my Canva, it's going to pop up. So say, for example, if I go back into my Canva home now, if I search for presentation, because I often do my presentation slides inside Canva, I'm going to have all of my different presentation slides come. We've got presentation slides for different clients we've worked with, different presentation slides for when I do a presentation, they're all here. And so I can find them all very, very easily because I have named it accordingly. If I search for untitled design, it's going to bring up all my designs and it's not going to be useful. So name your files exactly what they need them to be. And do not forget to do this step. I keep on thinking that this is an obvious point, but whenever I open up my student design files, I see that they're named some random number or some random thing, but name it as specifically as you can and your future self will thank you for it and will mean that you don't lose your designs. The next Next thing that you can do is to put your designs into particular folders. So speaking of presentation slides, if I go over here to projects on the left-hand panel, you can see down here, I've got my folders. So this has all the different folders for my business. I've got, I can press show more and you can see I've actually got one here called presentation slides. And so I can actually open that up and that's going to have all of the presentation slide documents that I've worked on because I've manually added them into this folder. I have the same thing for my opt-ins, my freebies. I have the same thing for different clients. I have the same thing for different brand elements that I like for my family photos, for screenshots from my students when they give me a great going review, for, for photo shoot from my studio, all these different elements I have saved in particular folders so I can always go to those folders and define them. You can also access these folders when you're inside a design. So once you're inside a design, you can access folders from here as well. So you can go to the projects panel over here. And again, you can access all the different folders, whether from this top panel here or from the all section when you scroll down. And I can access all the different designs in here. So if I, even if I go to presentation slides, say for example, I know that there's a slide from a presentation that I've created in the past, like maybe this one here, I can actually open this up and I can almost use this as my, as my own template and click on this and I can add it as a new page into the current design that I'm working on. So think through these things. And if you save things to folders, you're much more likely to find them. And I can also access different photos. So say, for example, I've got a photo shoot here that I did with my photographer. I've got that sitting here in my photo shoot folder and Canvas realized that I open this quite regularly. And so it sat it here automatically at the side for me. If you don't like ones that it picks up, you could actually hover over it and press the little, um, you've got to click on it and you can press the little X button to get rid of it. 
Um, so that's a really helpful thing to know in case graphics that come up that like it saves folders or apps in here that you don't actually need anymore, you can close them down. So if you want to save a design to a folder, you can just open up the projects panel or just your normal home panel. And if you hover over it, you'll see these little options come up. We've got the star, we've got the three dots. If you click on those three dots, you can move these to a folder. So you can see move to folder. If I click on this out arrow here, I can then choose which folder I want to move it into, or I can cre click create new and create a new folder to add that into. And if you're doing like some bulk tidying up, then you can actually just hover over it and press this little tick button, select multiple, multiple different graphics. And you can see down the bottom here, it's got three selected. And if I press this move to folder, I can move it to a folder. I can also bulk delete them if I need to do that. And of course, if you're wanting my help to learn how to use Canva or to learn how to create an incredible brand, I would love to work with you. There's all the links to my different programs in the description below, or you can head to the Seriously in Business Challenge, which is a little free program. It's got three videos. I don't feature these on YouTube anywhere. These are three free videos that you can watch to learn all about how you can utilize branding and design to create success in your business so that you can look seriously in business. I'll go through helping you think through your branding to creating really strategic graphics and a couple of incredible Canva hacks along the way. Now, another thing that I really love and I do quite regularly is adding things to starred. So you can see down the side here, I've got your starred. I can also change this. I can, I can like collapse that if I don't need it here. Um, and I can press this little plus button to add like a different section to my starred section, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to undo that. Um, but if I want to have, what I use this starred section for is for graphics that I'm returning to either daily or weekly graphics that I'm using really, really regularly. So for me, I have my thumbnail template. I've got my social media template. I've got my newsletter images. I've got my podcast story, like all these different things that I'm accessing really regularly. I've got that here. And so if you want to star something, all you have to do is hover over that design and press the little star button. And that will add that in there ready for you to use. If you don't want it there, you can just press those three dots again and press unstar. Now, a big thing that I see people always complain about Canva is how messy this main section is. Like this is so messy, I don't like it. This is because this is your recent design. So any design that you've opened recently is going to appear here. You can't change that. And unfortunately at this point of recording, Canva hasn't alternated how you can choose how this home section appears. The only thing you can do is click this so it list, got, gets listed as a view rather than a grid. I'm a grid gal, so I've got that there. But if you wanna have a more organized display of your Canva, then just straight away when you open up Canva, toggle over to the projects panel and that will display all of your folders. But again, it's gonna show your recent designs here for a little bit. And you can just scroll on down and you can see everything else in here. So you can see your designs, you can see your folders. So ideally, if you're someone who thrives on organization, just always click to this folder section. You can see you've got this folder section here as well. So I just scroll over to there and you've got everything that you need. You've also got the designs um, and everything is kind of sitting in here ready for you. You can sort them by most relevant dates, all these different things. That's what you can do inside this project section, but you can't do that same kind of sorting inside the default home section. Something else I want to touch on that I personally find works really well. Instead of creating a different folder or a different file every single time you make a social media post or every time you make a different graphic, put light graphics with light graphics. So say for example, for me, for my social media, if I go to my starred section, you'll see I've got Q2 and Q3 2024 social media. And this is where I've got all of my social media posts from these two quarters of the year. So I usually separate them into Q2 and Q3 separately, but I've put them put both of these into one for what I've got at the moment. But all of my social media posts for this season that aren't reels pretty much are in this folder and I can scroll across them and I can see all of them. If you can't see, if you want to see, have your Canva view look like mine, all you have to do is toggle to this view here, scroll view versus it looks like this. Or if I could toggle over now to thumbnail view, you get this bottom view, which is what I personally find works best. The reason I do this is because it keeps all of my social media in one. I find it a lot neater for me to work through. Like usually I remember I posted said design at a particular time. If you're making a particular template, like for a Venn diagram or for a checklist, then feel free to make that its own post. But I think also doing it in here can be really, really useful because it means that pretty much when I start a new quarter, often I actually just duplicate a design and, and just keep on working from things or I duplicate it and I, I'll cull down a few pages and I keep a few there as a template. That just means that all my designs are here. I can work from. So, and like, even like tomorrow, if I start to do a new post for this, I can just think, oh, actually my layout is kind of like this one. I'm going to duplicate this design. And that way I can just work from this rather than needing to start from scratch or using a template, which while I'm here, it would be remiss of me not to mention that you can save things as a brand template. If you have Canva Pro, if I press this publish as brand template, I can save this as my own custom template. That means when I go to the brand panel over here for my brand, you can see I've, I've got brand templates saved up here. And if I wanted to, I've done this for my social media before, I can actually click on this and I've got a thousand different templates just sitting here ready for me to use. So I could just click on this, press add as a new page, 
and it would be inserted into my design. And so that's a really easy way. If you're wanting to get really organized, create your, yourself a custom set of social media templates. Do these things, set yourself out well now so that it's really easy and quick in the future. Speaking of brand, also making sure that you save your brand kit into Canva is also a really great organizational tip. So for me, I've got my colors, I've got my fonts, I've got my brand voice, I've got some brand photos, my brand graphics. I've got all of these saved into Canva so I can access these whenever I need to, when I'm actually working on a design rather than trying to find my font again or find my, my, my graphics and my colors again, they're all saved in here automatically. And finally, something that I don't actually use that you might find useful if you're much more organized than myself is to use tags. Canva also has tags. If I click on these three dots again, you can see over here, there's add tags. So if I wanted to, I could type in here like presentation and I can add in multiple tags that suit this design. So I could type in purple or Jackie or white deer, like whatever I'm working on, I can, I can give this thing multiple tags and that way I could search the tags down the track and I could find the designs relevant to those tags. I haven't gone so far as organizing in tags. I'm finding just normal searching and just naming the file type well suits. But if you want to go that extra step, that is how you do it. So those are the ways that I organize my Canva. I would love to hear if you have any extra tips, pop them in the comments below that way that everyone can steal each other's ideas. Um, but I'd love to know. And if you're not already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you did like this video, now that you've made it to the end, make sure you hit that like button. Just helps more people to find this content and hopefully be helped by Canva and all of the organization things that you can look at. So thanks for watching and I will catch you next week for another tutorial. Bye.